Summer was the fourth MGI that I've been to and I decided that I would do something around student engagement in PLPs because one, I don't know that much about them. Uh, I hadn't had any practice with the kind of official version uh, using Protean, which we use in Williston. Um, I, as a third and fourth grade teacher, I had done goal setting and reflecting and using blogs and that was all fine and good until you put the label of PLP on it and it seems that the attitude, as probably a lot of you know, starts to suddenly change. Um, I was just texting my daughter who uh, is now in high school and she asked what I was presenting on and I told her and she went, oof, that's boring. PLPs are so boring and I asked her why and she said she didn't know. So this, the shroud of mystery around that. Uh, so I thought I would try to engage students differently um, by just giving them some different options of how to reflect. So that's kind of the backstory here. Uh, the, ab the abstract and rationale, kind of what I just told you about, um, but I did want to try and give students some options of how to reflect. The idea of setting a goal wasn't brand new, the idea of collecting evidence wasn't brand new, but the idea of how to reflect, um, that was kind of the sticky with it. So I thought, well maybe video, maybe audio, maybe some photos, which they were pretty comfortable doing. Maybe just how can it be less writing? So that's kind of where this came from. I uh, did a survey in the beginning of the year. Um, not every fifth grader or sixth grader got to it, but um, Hudson, you came as a new student to Williston. And you I said- came in third grade, I think. Oh, you came in third grade? Yeah. So you weren't brand new. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I stand corrected. Um, he was new to the PLP process though. So uh, what did you think when I asked this question about um, how do you like to reflect? What did that mean to you? It just meant like, when I didn't like really know any other way except writing. Mm. Kind of. And that's what, when uh, the opinions were kind of all over the map about what they thought about them. But in terms of uh, what they thought about reflecting, the majority were really saying they liked, they, they, they put writing. And you change and you'll see the survey results that fifth graders talked about. Writing is a way that they thought maybe they just needed to do it that way. Uh, I thought it was interesting fifth graders chimed in with more drawing and sketching. If you, when you change the slide, you'll see that, that the majority of sixth graders who had experience last year with Jared and with the other team, uh, it was reflecting through writing. And I thought it was interesting, if given the choice, how do you want to show it, they said writing. Yet nobody seemed to like the idea of having to do it. So I was feeling this confusion of, well, kind of expected confusion of, well, if you don't like it, why are there other options? And Hudson, you said you chose writing because you didn't think there was another way. If there was another way that you knew about, maybe you would have chosen it. How would you like to show evidence? Again, um, Oh no, the next That's one. The fifth grade. That's the fifth grade. I just you went go, back to compare. Yeah, yeah, go one more. Um, so this idea of student choice. You know, we hear a lot about that uh, going through the institute for these number of years. Student choice. Uh, you know, you think that I, I thought I would be giving student choice. You can write it this way or you can write it that way. You know, I mean, that was the idea of choice. And then suddenly thinking, wait, choice needs to be something that is really a choosing from a menu of options, right? So. A lot of this work has been done in the fifth grade skills group. Uh, the sixth graders are pretty busy uh, in our school. They go, they've got world language, they've got band, they've got chorus. The, the percentage that are actually around for a chunk of time that isn't academic is a lot less. So the fifth graders are really my, tri my trial group. So two times a week, we meet in skills group. And we do a number of things, but over the last month or so we've been thinking about PLPs. So talk a little bit about, can you have to talk a little bit about what your experience has been with goal setting and, and having to collect evidence? Well, I, Tell them, would you? So I did start out, like I did write a goal, but like it was just hard because I had to write all the other like responses to that goal, like my evidence. And then I did something called sketch noting kind mm. of, and it's like, you basically draw like a quick sketch and then you draw and then you like write some like you write like a few little captions and it just like helped me out a lot so i when i said that um they were clear in their opinions about having choice 
but I wonder if they really believed that they had the choice. And it occurred to me after talking to Hudson was that maybe they didn't know what those options were. So one of the things he mentioned, sketch noting, uh, last summer, uh, well, here's another example. A lot, you're gonna find that both the fifth grade and the sixth grade believe that having choice is important, yet I don't know if they thought they had the choice. So that was really played nicely into where we went with this. Um, sixth graders especially. Now coming out of, if you think they should have, they think they should have choice, but they all said writing, um, I'm anxious to try to carve out some time for them. But I've really noticed a difference with the fifth graders, and Hudson particularly, embracing some of these different options. So last summer, I first heard of the idea, thanks Katie. Uh, she had kind of honestly said, this is how she thinks and how her brain thinks. Mine does not, I am a writer. Uh, I communicate better in writing and I'm not a drawer. I told Hudson my sketch noting would be stick figures. And uh, you know, and he, well, you said to me, like it doesn't really have to be like a perfect sketch, <laughs> like museum worthy kind of. And that to me is uh, perfect news, and I think that's the message that I've... So I just dove right in. Um, I did have a link here, uh, just a <coughs> mountains of information about sketch noting um, online. Uh, Kathy Strock had a huge web page with links all over the map. You want me to go there? Um, yeah, you can if you want. Uh, again, Katie Farber was also somebody who, and then Jared was also connecting this morning, talking about ways to use, integrate sketch noting with map, which is my primary academic um, area, but you'll see it's just all of the stuff she has. It was very overwhelming, but at the same time, I'm the kind of person who doesn't necessarily do all of this reading first. To be honest, uh, I dive in. And you'll, Jared, if you go back to the presentation, you'll notice that um, the one on the right-hand side, we did a month-long integrated unit about uh, trash and waste, and each of the content area, we called it garbology, right? Um, they, were they were wondering why it always came up with the underline in Google Docs, I think, because it's not a recognized word. So we piloted it, right? We made that word. Um, so I showed him a video from BrainPop about waste management and said, there aren't a lot of rules here. Go for it. And this student on the right-hand side uh, did this two laps through the video um, in, without any instruction, hardly any instruction. And not every student liked it. You know, this is definitely one of the kind of um, flashier, I don't say flashier, more complete versions uh, that I got. But the idea that a student could do this without much instruction, uh, without much guidance, really kind of sold me on the idea of, well, maybe it could be used for reflection on your PLP. And Hudson, you were, the reason that you're here is that sketchnoting did kind of appeal to you, right? Mm -hmm. And you said it doesn't have to be a museum piece. <coughs> what else? Tell the group what else appeals to you about the idea of sketch noting. Well, like I wasn't like really a writer kind of. <laughs> so it's like How does writing make you feel? What did you say to Mr. Bailey? It it's get me like a little stressed and like <laughs> like I just feel like uh it's writing all over again this week. What is it about writing that kind of gives you that feeling? Like just like staring at a screen and like typing like the whole like a whole time when you could be like drawing and like and like doing like quick little like notes. Mm -hmm. Which is like, like what I really like. Which is what you like to do. Uh, this is a student example of after our integrated unit, we have them. It's been kind of, I learned um, a procedure, if you will, that students would uh, reflect on their PLP after kind of the summative activities in the unit. And one of the complaints, of course, is we only do this after summatives. And I thought, well, that's true, but one thing at a time. How can we make that act that activity perhaps be a bit more engaging, have this idea of choice? And here's a, this student. Um, I thought was interesting, uh, Mr. Bailey was doing the social studies piece, so this idea of this graphic organizer came first, and I thought was interesting with this student with taking responsibility. So they got the goal listed to take initiative and responsibility for learning. So this person actually, you see the picture of the house, and this was, I, you know, we don't always chat, I'm busy teaching the math piece and they're doing theirs, and seeing the student reflect and say, well, look, I did some of this at home, I did it in class, um, that, was, that was new for me. I had no idea that student was even doing that. And I don't know if, I know the student loves to draw, so this seemed like a natural choice for this one, but the, the learning that I got from it, I'm not sure would have come out in writing. So I appreciated that piece for them.
Um, then Hudson and his table mate, uh, Tommy, really were two uh, that dove into this idea of being able to use sketch noting um, and some kind of, I'm calling it sketch noting, you know, this idea of, of visually reflecting. Um, uh, change the screen and then we'll let uh, Hudson here talk a little bit about. So Hudson, uh, you're the student guest here. What made, what, what does this show about your uh, integrated unit work? Well, this just shows all my classwork that I did on computers and on paper. You so, talked about this one of good sources. So this was with Mr. Bailey, right? You were talking about e-waste. How does that, what, how is this effective for you other than having to write? Well, what made this work for you? Well, it wasn't like, like it wasn't like uh, writing. It wasn't really <laughs> writing, <laughs> but it like what it was. So I used like a site called View Video, which was kind of mm -hmm. cool, and it like just like put in like little clips of videos, mm -hmm. and then I got good sources. Okay. And, like why I said good sources makes for good products. Like, and I don't mean like a product like a computer kind of product. I mean like. Like, so a good, like, like a good, like, like a good, like, finished, like, a good piece video, of right? Yeah. Good yeah. piece of classwork. And I like that you've got those visuals. So those people who don't, in the, in Washington, that have no idea about what we did during our unit, I'm feeling like, if you look at this, graphing mm -hmm. shows up in math, right? What's this on the left-hand side? You said it brought up a genuine problem. It, like, I brought up a genuine, like, because it's about, uh, it was about a, um, how marine animals and animals Plastic are getting, in the oceans. yeah, mm -hmm. are getting hurt by that. And then the top left hand one, you, what does that detail mean? So you've got this drawing, it's pretty edit, detailed. By detail, I mean I added stuff for like color coding. And mm -hmm. Now is that a goal of yours, detail? Uh, not really, but. Okay, so you were able to communicate something beyond just your one goal there, cool, all right. So I gave them the option of doing this kind of idea of sketching. Um, then I went back to something that I felt more comfortable with that I've used in the past. Well, first of all, student opinions on sketch notes. Uh, so I, I interviewed along with the survey in the beginning, I interviewed students along the way while we were going through this process. Um, and I, I chose to put up a mix there. Um, a couple of the top two students you can see this idea of what was what Hudson was saying, I don't feel the pressure. I don't feel this idea that it has to be perfect when I do it. Uh, I can see my thinking and they can communicate visually. The bottom two I thought were interesting because they're people that actually, students that actually do choose the words. That they're feeling like either not a fan of drawing or if it's note taking, hard to keep up. So I gotta wrestle with this idea of how using it to take notes during learning, which is, I think, maybe the next step into math, as I was saying earlier. But also, I think the reflection piece, though, there is no real timeline. It isn't really like you have to be done at the end of class. And Hudson's saying it's something I can revisit. And I've noticed students want to revisit a sketch note more than they want to go back and revise a paragraph. And I'm sure that that's not something that, uh, I'm sure that's something you've heard before as well. Uh, so I did go back to something that I, I had used in the past. Uh, it's called Let's Recap. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that site. Uh, it's something that is free, uh, and it will be around. Don't until write June. it down, Jay. <laughs> yeah, you can write it down because you can use it. Um, Jerry, would you click on that yeah. link for Let's Recap? You can use it through June. They were going to be shutting down in January for a bunch of reasons that I didn't really read to find out. <laughs> but they said that they would stick around now through the rest of the year to keep the continuity. Uh, Let's Recap is great because it organizes video uh, reflections from students. You can send out a prompt, they get a join code, they, uh, with their Chromebooks, um, have the ability to film and record, and it, you, can put, you can put a question out there, you, um, how was your, um, yeah, can we go to the other one that was the, the yeah, that one. So we did have them uh, in the middle of the garbology work. Uh, I put, you can start this, they call it a queue, but you can, and then you can add multiple questions in there under the same one. So uh, can you go to the bottom one there? The one that says December 20th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yep. So then once they record this, it, and you click view all. Play all? No, view oh, all view down. All. Yep, yep, so then each student um, can, and you can limit how long it is, 30 seconds, one minute, so then the question is there, they get a little window, it pops up, it counts down, 
and then they record themselves. And you can then take this video, you can embed it in something, you can share a link, uh, they have, they can download it to their own files, and then what I did with them is they downloaded it, right? And then you inserted it into your Protean. your Protean. So that's what Williston is using. Uh, they all have their own Protean accounts, and they can either take a photo, like you did of your um, sketch, and you can put that in as evidence. I'm not evidence, but as reflection. They can also <coughs> take one of these videos, and you can download it, you can put it in your drive. Her Protean plays nicely with these other uh, platforms. And so then now they've got a video format of reflection. Uh, you, again, you can limit it, 30 seconds, a minute. I keep it at 30 because kids think they want to say more, and so they have to sit and watch a video that's a minute long, and they might even lose some interest. So, uh, but Let's Recap is going away at the end of the, of the year. I have not learned about synth, but this is what's replacing it. Uh, it is more, I think, pod, kind of the idea they want to create a podcast. They call it a micro-podcast um, site. So they, they play with uh, uh, the uh, idea of bytes of information. They, they give you 256 seconds. And when you're talking like that used to be, right? 256 bytes was a lot of information. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, I haven't used this. I haven't explored it yet because uh, Let's Recap is sticking around, so I'll keep using that throughout the month. Uh, I mean, throughout the school year. But um, I found, uh, <coughs> Hudson, talk about the video. If we go to the next slide, you'll see here he is. Want to play that? And then we can talk about it. My POP goal is that I will take initiative and responsibility for my learning to, by managing my time well to get my work done. This is connected to the Garbology unit because I plan for all for everything and check Google Classroom. Another student on the right hand side, again, I wouldn't I don't know Hudson that much as a writer. I wouldn't say he's I, I do know this other student, kind of a reluctant writer, uses voice to text a lot when they're writing emails. We do weekly emails home um, that families have to that, that students write to their families about their week. Uh, and the student on the right, I would say, is a reluctant writer. Uh, but as you play this, I think you're gonna at least hear it's not the best video quality. My goal is to organize and use purposeful communication in my writing. I am achieving this goal in Garbology by writing my ebook in ELA. This helps me work on clear and effective communication. This helps me with organization because it breaks it down into steps. We took notes in a graphic organizer, then we put it in a five paragraph graphic organizer, and finally writing my ebook in Book Creator. We did have them practice some scripts. You can hear that's not really off the cuff right there, but some are more than others. Um, some will be just kind of, hey, this is me and here's my reflection. You can tell you've practiced a bit more. But uh, the fact that you get him to talk with those transferable skills language, uh, we did have them set goals in the past. I believe it was maybe as something as simple as I want to get my spelling homework. That's a little more free range. This year we, are, we really pushed and we decided that they helped me decide because I'm new to the team with them. Um, this summer at MGI that we were going to f push them, or some of the sixth graders were like, why well, don't I, well, I have this one? So that they could pull evidence from every class. I had students saying they wanted to choose to get better at math facts. Well, you, your only evidence is from math facts. Um, now with these transferable skills goals, um, they're able to pull evidence from other places. So our district, CVSD, has transferable skills which go then to become graduation standards in 912. And so we're having students pick one of those transferable skills as their goal to really help them see um, the cross-curricular uh, piece of all the transferable skills. So getting them away. It was much harder last year when a kid had a personal goal of scoring in the soccer season <laughs> to track it. Because yeah. um, then they were like, well, it's basketball season. I'm like, okay, great. So we have no evidence this week. So this is the idea being that we're, we're, we've actually scaled back. So we have them pick one goal uh, this year that's a transferable skill and what we're doing with intentionality is having them take a deeper dive into that transferable skill see it spread across their day and outside of their life in school rather than having them pick a personal goal an academic goal and trying to juggle this and that pick one goal and let's go deeper on that and see it kind of come through all your classes that's it if you had to choose now and or say at the end of this <coughs> work that we've done over the last couple months do you feel like you have more choice now yeah, do you understand? Because I, 
like I said before, it's like, it was like, <laughs> it was like just writing. I thought it was just writing for a long time. And now I have like three or four more new choices that I can do. How does that, what does that feel in terms of when the assignment comes now? If I, when we say I, on Tuesday, we're going to work on PLPs again. That like it's like I, I can just think instead of, instead of thinking, oh, I have to write again. <laughs> So I'm I hoping. Can, like, just, like do it, like do another sketch note, or maybe do a video recording. You're saying in the lobby that it kind of feels more freeing that you're able to think more about the actual what you want to say in the reflection rather than having to worry about making it fit into a writing piece. Like he was Hudson was talking to us in the chair about just not having the writing take over the task. Right. He's able to f focus much more on actually what he wants to say. And, uh, and the quality of the reflection because he's mm -hmm. not having to try to figure out how to do a high quality reflection and then transfer that as a writing piece. And I think as, as the digital... I'm achieving my goal is to organize well, your last slide? Writing 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 no, that should be one more. Okay. My opinion on reflecting of PLP has not changed, but um, it's cool to know that I have an option to do videos because before I always typed. My opinion on reflecting about POP has changed because I now know that there are many other ways to reflect. For example, I like jotting down ideas on a piece of paper or typing on a device because it is much better than just recording yourself on a device. I also think this is important because you can come back to your ideas and you can think deeper. We did also, I did also use Let's Recap uh, to, as, as a way of um, uh, having students reflect on this process, not just, so what do you think now, like Hudson said, do you, how do you feel about having more choices? Just a couple of examples of students talking about that. And we'll link to this on our Yeah, I have not done that yet, but I will. Um, I know I, we just talked a lot through that. Questions that you wonder, um, kind of the process or how it went or other resources? Great. Last slide. Yeah, on this one. I think there's one more. Great. Yeah. So for me, uh, the protein learning curve, um, that's what we all need to keep working on. I think just the micro, uh, the minutia of, of sharing and making it public and just the pieces of that. Um, as I've heard from a lot of workshops, finding the time to do it and integrate it is tricky. Um, that makes me think that this evidence collection needs to be able to happen at any time. I've yet to really do that as well as I want to. Uh, I do want to give an actual survey using Google Forms, but uh, the video uh, feedback is, is what I use for now. And um, yeah, do you that's want me to do just a quick, and while they're, if they're thinking of questions, just take a look. Yeah, so I don't know if people are familiar with Protean or if you're using it, but um, these, uh, those videos and sketch notes can be uploaded right in to their evidence, so there's the video that he did. So they can be uploaded right into the evidence of their learning. Yes? Can I just ask a question? Please. A question? It might have just been coincidental, but um, when you had student feedback, uh -huh. I noticed that the two boys preferred sketch notes and the two girls preferred writing, and I, just, I was just curious. I'm a music teacher, so yeah, yeah. I'm totally fascinated. I wasn't surprised by the girls who said that they liked the, the writing more, mm -hmm. but they were also prolific writers. Yeah. The, uh, the first like, yeah. Uh, okay. sketch, that first kind of sketch I showed about waste management mm -hmm. was from um, a girl who's leans more towards, you know, the one who's going to be you know, doodling in math class, uh, okay. you know, yeah. and so I think that it, um, yes, you know, I, I, I threw out that reluctant boy writer piece and I, I don't mean to put any of us in a pigeonhole, but I do think um, there's something about the technology, there's something about yeah. this interface with their Chromebook that gives a little more inspiration. It's kind of like a taking a motivation. flexible pathway and putting yeah. it in a flexible pathway. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. it's that idea of if we're going to give students flexible pathways for learning, let's give them flexible pathways for yeah. reflecting on their learning. Um, and what we found at Sterling and what Mike was brought to the table in his year with us is this idea of giving them multiple because we were so text driven in their reflections. Uh, but that doesn't really seem to fit with the philosophy of a personalized learning plan. The idea is to find tools that make you successful and to learn how to play to those strengths. So coming up with a variety of options for reflecting on a personalized learning plan is kind of kind of a light bulb moment for us and uh, the rest so. of the team this yeah. year. So that's been great. Hudson, thank you for coming. I appreciate you standing up here in front of these people.
Thank you very much.